Welcome to the next project. This is a learning curve event. We are going to be winding a set of three Stratocaster single coil pickups. Uh, I've got one done already. This is the bridge pickup. We've got two more to go, the neck and middle position. I'm going to talk about how I go about determining the resistance value that I'm targeting and my wind count. Hopefully I'll be in the ballpark, get close as we start the next project. All right, let's get the confusion started. We'll do a quick sketch of our neck, middle, and bridge pickups. And we want the neck and middle to be in phase and hum canceling or the middle and bridge to be hum canceling. That seems simple, right? Yeah, not to me, not simple at all. Let's figure this out. We're going to have to alternate our start lead, which is gonna be ground in this winding situation, where the neck and the bridge will have the same ground start position and wind in clockwise orientation from ground to hot, if you look at a clock. The middle will be counterclockwise from ground to hot. So now we've figured out which way our coils need to be wound, but which way does the bobbin need to spin to wind that coil? It's pretty simple. If you need a clockwise wound coil, you spin your bobbin the other way. So a clockwise coil would be a counterclockwise bobbin rotation. Yeah, it's starting to get confusing. Yep, the confusion is just beginning. Now we have to figure out our magnet polarity. This needs to be staggered also, very much like our wind direction does. So for the neck and bridge, we're doing a south up magnet polarity. For the middle, we're doing a north up magnet polarity. Okay, so now we've achieved in phase and hum canceling for our pairs of pickups. And here we're looking at if it's clockwise coil and which polarity it is, so we can get our head around it a little bit better. All right, I'm feeling better. All the confusing stuff is still confusing, but we figured it out. Now it's time to move right into some guesswork. We are going to wind three different resistance value pickups. And we need to figure out the total wind count per pickup based on that resistance number. So how am I gonna figure out my wind count to achieve that kilo ohm value? Uh, well, Based on other pickups that I've wound, I've done some number scrambling and figured out that I need roughly 1,280 winds per 1K of resistance. So if I multiply 5.75 times 1,280, I should get roughly 7,360 winds. If I multiply 6.0 times 1,280, I get 7,680 winds and 6.25 times 1280, I should get around 8,000 wines. These are all ballpark numbers. Yada, 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 or we could just go online, look up pickup coil estimator, plug in the resistance we want, the type of coil we're using, our wire gauge, and get another way to find a ballpark number. get this learning curve project underway, I went to Tonecraft.com and ordered a 1975 vintage Stratocaster style bobbin kit. And it came with three bobbins, all uh, flatware is done, the magnets were pressed in. Once I received them, I got some Captain tape, which is the yellow tape I have there. Instead of spraying it with lacquer, um, use this tape and it keeps the wire from wearing or grounding out against the magnets but I uh, got those all wrapped, getting my winding set up all put together. I have a little clear container that the wire I'm using wraps through. Here I'm threading the needle, getting the really fine 42 gauge wire threaded into the start eyelet. And we're gonna wind the bridge pickup first. winding the bridge pickup first and taking a little bit of time to get the um, guides aligned with the flatware on the bobbin and those just help me keep from throwing wire off either side of the flatware as I wind 
I have to take uh, a little time, make a few minor adjustments as I get going. And again, this is just really to help me keep from making a mess, which can still happen. I have had a number of people ask me, um, you know, how much it takes to, or how much it costs to wind pickups. Is it worth the, the effort? And that's really something you'll have to decide for yourself. I built this winder for probably about $70 a handful of years ago. Rolls of wire have an expense which varies. I, I buy a small, I think it's a one pound spool. Uh, the flatware, the bobbin kits, there's an expense there. Um, so you really have to weigh what it is you're after um, toward the expense and the time needed to get into it. And there's a lot of research needed that I haven't even finished yet. So is it worthwhile? Yes. Does it take time? Yes. Is it expensive? Sure can be. And we finish winding the bridge pickup to 8004. Just need to take that, um, you know, take the end of the coil wire and run it through the finish eyelet on the bobbin and we're done. And we're moving on to the next pickup. Basically going to repeat the same process. And now I'm winding the middle pickup. Um, using the machine running in the same direction, the only difference is I place the bobbin on the machine facing in a different direction. The bridge and the neck pickups, I had the top of the bobbin facing the machine. To wind the middle pickup, I had the base of the bobbin facing in toward the machine. So here you can see I'm winding a neck and the base of the pickup is away from the machine. The top of the bobbin is toward the machine. So you can reverse your wind direction just by flipping your bobbin over. With the winding all done and the wire fed through the eyelets, I'm using pushback wire, which came with this kit, which is nice. It comes with black and white and also yellow wire. I use the black and white for the bridge and neck and the yellow and a black for the middle. And uh, I got the bridge pickup all soldered in and done, as I showed you. And then I was like, oh, I forgot. I also purchased a bridge plate for this pickup. So I had to desolder my ground, pull a little bit of extra out. So I have a ground lead hanging out there. And now I'm prepping the bridge plate, putting a dab of solder on there, uh, a little spacer to keep from overheating things and just soldered that ground lead right to the bridge plate. Use a little uh, double-sided adhesive tape and this pickup is done. And yet one more step. Uh, the pickup kit that I purchased, I chose not to have the pickups magnetized or the bobbins magnetized. I wanted to do that myself. And I'm using half inch by half inch by three inch uh, rare earth magnets. Uh, one is north, the other is south. So I take my pickup and I snap it down to one of the pieces and hit it with the other. So I have a north and a south on opposite ends. Pull it apart, finesse it off of there. And now we're ready to test to see how much juice we just put into this pickup using our gauze meter. And we check each pole. You can see it's south polarity and we're getting our readings in the 1000 to 1100 range. Take note of all these, then do an average. And that's our gauze rating per pickup. So now to compare our goal with reality. On the bridge, I wanted a 6.25K. Reality was a 6.06. .06. Middle was a 6.0K. And reality is 5.76. The neck, I wanted a 5.75K. and ended up with a 5.54. So all across the board, based on the numbers I used, I came up with about 96% of goal. Which, you know, there's still room to improve. The bridge has 6.06K and 2.36 Henry. 
the middle of 5.76k, 2.09 Henry. And the neck is a 5.54k at 1.97 Henry. Again, our gauze numbers are based on averaging the six poles per pickup. With all the pickups put together and tested, I can now compare my target resistance goal to the reality, what I ended up winding, run some new numbers and come up with a new wind count per K of resistance. And that will help me get closer the next time around. I can also look at how far off I was, you know, how far did I fall short? And that's interesting too. The greater the wind count, the further off I was in my initial wind count estimate. Interesting. And for a final step in the, the building of these pickups is to wax pot. Some people like wax potting, some people do not. That's fine. Some people like wax potting but not vacuum wax potting. That's fine. I put the uh, paraffin and beeswax lump of wax on uh, the stove in a double boiler or a steamer, whatever they call that thing. I don't know. I don't spend enough time in the kitchen. Got it all melted to 150 degrees. Placed the pickups all in the uh, mason jar, put a lid on it, drew it down under vacuum using a brake bleeder to create a vacuum, and we're sucking the air out of the pickups. This is up to you. Proceed with caution. Hot wax is hot wax. You could burn yourself. It will catch on fire if you're not careful. You don't want to burn your house down. So uh, use caution or maybe just don't do it. That's a, an option too. Pulling them out of the wax, cleaning them off just a little bit, and they are pretty much done. And one more bit of testing before I take the pickups in a guitar and plug it into an amp, and that is to use an application called Bode Plot, which is created by Axe Tech. I'll put a link in the description. The nice thing about this is it gives me a visual representation of what's going on with the pickup, so I can compare this over time, save the findings out, open them up in an Excel file, keep track of my work, what I'm doing, and if I'm making any improvements or headway.